You're listening to the Create What You Speak podcast, where I invite you to come along with me as we shape our own reality together. My intention is to bring out the magic in you. Now let's get started. Come along now, run away from the humdrum. We'll go to a place that is safe from greed, anger, and boredom. We'll dance and sing till sundown, and peace with abandon. We'll sleep when the morning comes, and we'll rise by the sound of the bird song. My name is Sloane Fremont, and today I'm going to talk to you about finding something to look forward to. Welcome to another episode of the Create What You Speak podcast. This week, we're going to talk about finding something to look forward to. I know for me, this has been really difficult lately, as it seems like there's just nothing to look forward to, and that's not the best place to be in. This is something I've been thinking about how to address, and I've been struggling with it, like I said, and so I wanted to talk to you about that this week. So before we get into that, though, I wanted to remind you of a couple things. If you haven't signed up yet, be sure to join our private Create What You Speak group, which is located on the Tapa Talk forum. I'll link to it in the show notes. I've also got a link in my website. Um, It's totally free, but this is a a place where we can chat after the podcast to get to know each other and get to support each other. And I would just love to hear, um, hear from you. So I created this group. So I will link to that in the show notes. And just another reminder, a new episode of the Create What You Speak podcast goes live every Monday. Make sure to subscribe in your favorite podcast player so you don't miss an episode. You can visit my website, sloanfremont.com, or you can email me, sloanfremont at gmail.com with any questions. All right, so let's get into this week's topic of finding something to look forward to. Like I said in the intro, this is something I've had a really difficult time with lately because the things I would normally get excited about, like what I would call the bigger things, you know, are just obviously not happening right now. So it seems like there's just nothing to look forward to. It seems like it's the same day over and over. You know, I don't know. Is it the weekend? Is it during the week? I don't know. Does it matter? Does anyone care? No, it doesn't seem so. And I've heard so many other people say the same thing, right? Like, you know, everything is on hold and with feelings of things, and and not everything, right? Obviously not everything, but our normal way of living really feels on hold. And when things feel on hold, it's like it keeps us all waiting, right? Like we're all in this waiting room. And in the wait, you know, the anxiety builds and the confusion and the anger and the feeling of overwhelm or, you know, whatever you're feeling right now, all of that sits with us in that waiting room while we're waiting on hold. So for me, things like, you know, travel and concerts are obviously not happening. And so I just I've been struggling with this lately, feeling like I have nothing to look forward to. And I don't like it. It's not a good thing. Right. It's not mentally good. It's not helping anything. It's uh, actually doing quite the opposite. And this is where I've realized these feelings of hopelessness are coming from, because I hate to say this, but it feels like there's no excitement in living anymore. And I don't mean that as like, you know, I'm not saying this is like a suicidal thing or something. I'm just saying it as there just isn't as much happening as we're used to. And it feels hard to get excited about things. And since those big things aren't there, you know, and again, the big things like, you know, the vacation or the trip or the weekend away or the, you know, nights out with your friends or, you know, whatever it is, just aren't there. And because those things aren't there and feeling also kind of like this just is never going to end, right? There's no solution being presented. There's no, you know, okay, on this date, you know, we're going to get back to normal. None of that's happening. And so it's just, it's been hard, at least for me to find something to look forward to. And so, Obviously, like I said, this isn't good. There's a lot of stories going on, terrible stories, right, in my head that I keep telling myself. And I find myself, like, floating from, like, one emotion to the other in a matter of, like, five minutes. Like, from complete, like, uh, you know, just feeling just miserable and terrible to swinging immediately back to, but everything's going to be okay. You know, it's, it's just such a weird time in that regard. And 
find it. So today we're talking about this, finding something to look forward to. Since we don't have these bigger things happening, we've got to start to find those things to look forward to in the smaller things, right? In the everyday things that we're doing, in our things that previously probably would have seemed somewhat like pointless or even insignificant, right? But this is how we start to take our power back from these types of situations that feel hopeless. We, this is how we start to show ourselves that we have the power over our lives, no matter what's going on. Rather than focusing on you know, what's outside of us and maybe like craving that control over things that we don't have any control over, looking at these little things and finding something to look forward in them, I think are super beneficial and super helpful. Because remember, you are the creator of your reality and life is only going to show up for you in a way that you think it will, right? So if we keep feeling these nothing to look forward to or this hopelessness, right? That's what we're going to keep getting. So the point of today's show, my intention with today's show is to get you out of that. Get me out of it too, right? This is just as much as a reminder for me as it is for you. So, and yes, before I go on, let's just, let's recognize these smaller things will obviously never replace the bigger things, right? They, I'm not trying to say that. But right now, the smaller things are what's in front of us. Those smaller things are what we can focus on. They're what we can control and start to take that control back and start to feel better. Start to feel better, right? Because that's ultimately what we're all after. So I started thinking about that this week and how I could bring more excitement back into my life and how I could start to find everyday things to look forward to. Right? These everyday things that are happening, how can I start to find look forward to them? So here's a few things that I came up with in my own life. So one of the things that I decided, and, and here's another part of this. I just decided that I'm going to start looking forward to these things because we all know the decision is where it, it's at, right? If, if we're just, without a decision, we're just floating around randomly. It's all random. It's all just kind of getting one result or getting another result or not getting a result, you know, the decision is where it's at. So deciding that you're going to find something to look forward to in these everyday things are is, is step one, obviously. But after you've made that decision and decided, yeah, I want to do this. I want to start looking at things differently. I'm going to decide to find something to look forward to. Here's some examples of things you might do in your life. These are some that I came up with. So the first one is I got an Audible subscription and decided to start listening to audiobooks again. Um, I found a really good one that it, it's and the reason why I did this is because I, I need it, it's it's a helpful distraction. It's a good distraction, right? It gets it gives me into a different storyline other than my own. And this book I found on Audible is called Pretty Things. It's got like I want to say like five thousand positive, like almost five star reviews. So I downloaded that book. I got an Audible subscription again, and I, I start I started listening to um, an audiobook. And I start I do this a little bit more than watching TV, right? I'll just be at home sometimes if I'm picking things up. I'm listening to the book. If I'm, uh, you know, instead of watching TV, I used to love to do this. I, I had kind of forgotten about this, but I used to love to do this like at the end of the day when I was tired because it would feel like somebody was reading to me and I still got the story, but just having someone read to you, um, I forgot how much I liked that. So getting the audiobook and just that's something to look forward to. I like the story. I'm enjoying it. It's interesting. And so that's that was number one, the audiobook from Audible. The second one is a self-care routine I've started doing, which is fascia blasting. And I talked about this, I think, a couple episodes ago, but this is something I recently discovered. Um, fascia blasting is an interesting thing. It's, it's, we have fascia that runs through our body, all over our body. And what I have come to find is that it affects a lot more things than I thought it did, because I didn't even know anything about it. And so I started doing this with these fascia blasting tools. And what I'm finding is that it feels so good to do that. Like it's a, it's a form of self care that because I'm not getting a massage or, you know, I'm not, um, you know, maybe doing yoga as much like flat fascia blasting is helping my whole body feel release. And that was one thing that it's actually what drew me to it was because my, I just felt all the time, no matter how much yoga I was doing, no matter how much I was stretching, like my legs, everything felt tight. Like it always felt tight and it was achy at the end of the day. Like my, I would lay in bed and my legs would just ache. And I started doing this and it's been, um, I love it. I love it. Absolutely love it. I feel like my body feels released. Like <laughs> that's the best way I can describe it. So that's something I look forward to at the end of the day. I take the time to do that for myself. 
The next one I came up with was my daily walk. So this is something that I really make sure that I do every day is walk. And it doesn't have to be, you know, an hour long. Sometimes it's 15, 20 minutes. Sometimes it's 45 minutes. But walking gets me out of the house. It gets me moving. It gets me out of my, you know, I think being in the house all day gets you stuck in like, um, you know, we're in the same environment. So walk, getting out of the house, like it shifts the environment. It changes my, you know, what's happening. It, you know, I listen to the audiobook during that time. Sometimes I listen to music. Sometimes I listen to nothing, whatever I feel like doing. But walking is really helping me. It's something to look forward to getting out of the house. The next one was practicing Spanish. So I've talked about this quite a bit on the show. And I want to be conversational in Spanish. That's something that's a goal of mine. I've been taking classes. I'm I'm in another class right now. And so this is something that um, I'm using the Spanish Dict app. It's a very good app. I love it. Um, Very helpful. But, you know, this was my goal. And I wanted to stick with it. So even when I'm doing this, you know, five to ten minutes a day, it helps me to feel good about getting closer to that goal. So I look forward to that. I, 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 instead of looking at, oh my God, one more thing to do. You know, no, this helps me because it's getting me towards my goal and I want to do it. So practicing my Spanish is another thing that I found every day to look forward to. Uh, this next one, you're probably going to laugh, but drinking Mountain Dew. I love Mountain Dew. I always have loved it. I drink one can a day. I don't need to hear about the this or that about the health or the sugar or any of that because my true belief is it's not about what we consume. It's how we feel about what we consume. And I love drinking Mountain Dew and I'm going to always do it. It's something I look forward to. And it's been this way for years for me. Like I used to look forward to it when I, some of the other jobs I worked at, like in the morning, it, it made me, I loved it. It made me feel good. And I I don't really care what anybody else says about it. So it's something that feels good to me and that I like. And that's something that I look forward to. Another thing that I look forward to is my afternoon meditation. So I've gotten back into this where I spend, you know, 10 or 15 minutes in the afternoon just decompressing. I do, there's so many, you know, online meditations, how, you know, Insight Timer is a great one that you can use, uh, even just simple YouTube videos. But afternoon meditations for me are a good way to, especially if I'm having a shitty day where I'm, you know, like I talked about feeling like hopeless or feeling like, God, this is never going to end, you know, or that kind of stuff. Afternoon meditations help break up that pattern of thought. And it's something I find very helpful. And um, so that's something I look forward to. The next one is sitting on my deck. Um, this is something I never took time to enjoy before, but this year I spent a lot of time, you know, making my deck look nice, like putting plants out there, getting chairs and, you know, a rug and making it look very homey, like another room, another extension of the house. And I love it. I love sitting out there. It's it's peaceful. It's relaxing. It's it's. It's something I never took time to do before because I was never home enough. But now this is something that I look forward to, especially at the end of the day, just sitting out there. Um, It's also nice sometimes because my neighbors are out there, so we're able to talk. And, you know, it's, it's it's a good thing for me at the end of the day. And then lastly... You know, and I could go on with with a lot of things, but this is where I'm at right now. Like this, these are the things that are making me feel good and that, that I'm looking forward to. But the last one is online Zumba classes. So I've went through phases with these online classes where I was like, oh, okay, this is cool. Then I was like, fuck, I can't take another fucking Zoom class. But now I'm kind of back on it again. And I'm like, okay, I miss dancing. Like I really miss dancing. I'm not going to wear a fucking mask to dance. That is like the least amount of freedom for me, at least, and I dance to be free, not to be confined. And that feels extremely confining to me. So I'm not doing any dancing at all. And, but having these online classes, um, feel good. It's not ideal. It's not the best, but it's not the worst either. And so it's something that I'm looking forward to again. It's, it feels good to me to, to do that. So these are just some simple things I came up with. And as you can see, you know, these are obviously not big things. And prior to 2020, these kinds of things would have seemed like so insignificant. They probably wouldn't even have registered on my radar as something to really pay attention to. I would have just done them and moved on. But, you know, and I even might have felt annoyed with some of them, right? Like, oh, God, I got to go to Spanish again or, you know, something like, um, I don't have time to walk. You know, even though I know it's going to make me feel good. No, I'm not making the time for that. Right. Like that's the kind of thoughts I would have had before. But now I feel like these things are lifesavers. Like these things are saving me from myself in a lot of cases. And they're helping me to keep the focus on something outside of the obvious. Right. On, on, they help me keep the focus on something other than the doom and gloom that seems to be surrounding all of us. 
So as you move forward this week, can you find something to look forward to? One thing, right? Can you find one thing to look forward to? And understanding that the bigger things may not be there for us right now, but that doesn't mean we can't still look forward to things and get excited. So what can you focus on this week to get excited about and and find something to look forward to? I like looking at it from the perspective of what can I look forward to today, right? Like what can I look forward to today? Because it's, it's, for me, it's too easy to fall back on those feelings of hopelessness if I, if I don't focus it on a daily basis. So thinking about it daily helps pull me out of that. But if that doesn't work for you, do it whatever works, right? Like weekly or monthly or whatever works for you. But the, but the point of all this is find something to look forward to again, something to get excited about again, whatever that might be to keep us focused on feeling good. All right. So that's it for this week on our topic of finding something to look forward to. I'm going to wrap up the show with our magical intention to take away for the week. I'll talk about the songs I picked and then close this out. This week was all about finding the magic again in the little things. Since our worlds have been, to me, just the only way I can describe it is shrunk, right? They've just shrunk down. And we're not doing things that we normally would be doing. Finding something to look forward to is so critical for all of us right now. Not only does this feel good, but it keeps us in this higher vibrational energy that helps everything in our lives run smoother and easier for us because we're aligned with more positive energy. When we feel good, we're more aligned with that positive energy. And when we feel bad, we're more aligned with the negative energy. And so I talked about some examples of things I used in my own life to look forward to every day. And this included listening to a really good audiobook, going for my daily walks, practicing Spanish, and even doing Zumba online. And so... Yes, let's recognize that the smaller things will never replace the bigger things. But right now, the smaller things are what are in front of us that we can focus on. And I think really focusing on these smaller things, it, it's, it has a bigger impact than maybe we realize. At least it did more than I realized because getting excited about these smaller things again is important, right? It's important. It's not insignificant. It's not like just, it's not stupid, right? It's, it's, it's imperative right now to do because... This is how, again, this is how we keep feeling good in the midst of all this craziness going on. And this is how we start to take our power back from these situations that feel hopeless, right? I mean, there's a lot of hopelessness if you turn on the TV or you look on social media, right? It's hopelessness is pretty much the agenda that's being pushed. And so looking at these these smaller things to look forward to these and, and maybe you have maybe not everything you have is just smaller right that's where my life is right now i hope maybe you have bigger things to look forward to but i really don't right now so that's why i'm focused on that but whatever it is finding something to look forward to is how we start to take our power back from these situations this is where we show ourselves that yes we do have the power of our over our lives no matter what's going on and rather than focusing on what's outside of us and, and, like I said, craving that control over things that we just don't have any control over, we can start to look at, go within, in, within ourselves. And remember, we create our own reality. And life is only going to show up for us in, in the way that we think it will. And we get to decide how we want that to go. All right, so before I get to the songs, I want to remind you of my course that I have launched. It's called 33 Days of Magic, and this is where we get to take what you learn in the podcast and apply it in real life. This is a course I put together to help you to start to transform your life on a daily basis by taking small, actionable steps. So we were talking about this week about finding things to look forward to. This course will definitely help you do that. There's it's what I use in my own life. It's the format I use. It's, um, I have a template for you that walks you through it every day. It's all done for you. And so what you're going to get with this is a 46-page PDF that contains the template for 33 Days of Magic. I give you the, we'll talk you through the steps to create your magical vision. There's a magical method that I teach you that it's the daily process that, that works that, I've used, that I use in my own life that helps you to really amp up your manifestation power. And then I've got some other bonuses for you included in the course. And, you know, after going through this, you can expect to get really clear about what it is that you want to manifest in your life. And you'll be able to step into that energetic version of yourself that has those things. So you can line up with them and you can easily, it, 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 you'll find that life works better for you when you start to focus on these things and operate from this way. And this course help you, helps you do that. It makes it easy and accessible and it's super powerful. So 
It's called 33 Days of Magic. You can visit 33daysofmagic.com. That's the number, 33daysofmagic.com. Songs, before I close out, I want to tell you about the songs this week. Um, So I felt like I needed some good, fun, upbeat songs. So the intro song is called Crazy Game of Poker by OAR. This song goes back to like 20 years ago for me being in college. And I still love this song. And I, I can still picture so many nights of everybody screaming this song and like having the best time, like dancing, being in a car, like whatever it was. And there's a part of the song where he talks about, um, I looked over my shoulder and I saw a clown and I said, what you doing in the bar tonight? So I said, Johnny, what you doing tonight? He looked at me with a face full of fright. And I said, how about a revolution in that line? He looked at me with a face full of fright. So what we used to do is like when a face full of fright, like we would put our hands up, like, you know, like jazz hands, like, you know, all five fingers out and like put it right next to our face and be like face full of fright. Like, I don't know why we always did that, but this song to me is, it's so fun. I remember having so many fun times to this song. So that's the intro song, crazy game of poker by OAR and the outro song. I feel good about this by the Mowgli's. And I think I've played this song before because I can't say that word. M O W G L I Mowgli. Like it's, I don't know why I can't say that word, but, um, This song is about, so there's a verse that says, I've been looking for love in the distance. Tell the sidewalks of cities I visit. Up the coast, looking for something different. All along, you were there, but I missed it. I don't know what it is, but I feel good about this. And I like this. I know they're talking about relationships probably with these verse, but all along you were there, but I missed it. Like we were talking about this week with finding something to look forward to these, you know, in these little things that in the past maybe seemed so insignificant, but all along, they were there, but we missed it, right? We weren't paying attention to those. And now those things are like our anchor. They're the thing that's holding us and keeping us sane, I feel like, you know, in a lot of days. And so, and then it closes out. I, I don't know what it is, but I feel good about this. And, and that's what I've decided. I've decided to just feel good about it. Like, feel good. Let these little things that are something I can look forward to, I've decided to let myself feel good about them. And I hope you will too. All right, so that's it for this week on our topic of finding something to look forward to. I would love to know what you think about this episode. Remember, you can join our Tapa Talk group. I'll link to it in the show notes if you have questions. If you want to email me, sloanfremont at gmail.com. And you can also find me on social media at sloanfremont. And if you like the podcast, remember, subscribe, rate, review, tell all your friends so more people can find me. Thanks for listening this week, and I hope this episode helps you to find something to look forward to. (laughs) 